welcome to a discussion of the status code. As we've seen previously, codes are part of your setup for the Alexio database. They will become your drop-down list. None is more important than status. Status is something that will set at the highest level an indicator of someone in your database, meaning if someone is a regular attender, they're going to be flagged with that status. But one of the beauties of the Alexio software is that someone's status isn't an, a single entry field, but rather the system will keep a status history for you. So while status is a dropdown, in many ways similar to, let's say, the dropdown for occupation, in that it is built off of a code in the administration area. Status is a very unique one because as we're seeing right here, when you look at status in its history view that we're seeing here, which is the default, there is no way to change it out of status history. If there's only one entry, that's all that would be shown. We see a progression of someone through their relationship with your church. So our discussion now begins to how to set up status to fit the needs of your church. Out of the box, Alexio provides some statuses uh, that starts with attended one time and then progresses on through attended two time, three time, regular attender, and then some different membership levels. You'll be identified or the system will identify codes that are system or required for the program to operate properly and cannot be deleted. You can change the name of these codes. So if you do not like the concept of attended one time and then two and then three, you can override and type in something new there. It is a good idea in your code definition to indicate that this used to be the general code attended one time, but we are now using it as something else. So good procedure there would be to make note of if you're gonna not use what we provide, take note of that. The idea of code, excuse me, of status in general is that it's your it's identifiers or milestones of someone's relationship with your ministry. So if you initially call everyone a guest or a visitor, that might be a code for you. Then you might move them to a regular attender and then potentially they stay there if that's a very simple progression. You may want more detail. It really comes down to what does your ministry need, how do you want to view and see people, and then ultimately also report on those people. Once you've identified what you think the right codes are for your ministry, you can decide which one of those is the default. In my case, I am using attended one time as the default value when I create a new record. That's very consistent with the concept. I'm entering new people. That's probably because I saw them over the weekend at a service or they filled out a visitor card and now I'm entering in the database, I want the default code to be attended one time. Yours might be guest or visitor. If you don't, if you want to keep the codes that are provided by the database, and of course some of them have to be here, you can affect where they appear in the drop-down list by using sort order. So what some churches will do is if it's a code they don't want to get rid of, but they don't want it to appear at the top of their list, they'll affect the sort order. Another way to do that is if you have everything the same sort order, you could put a Z in front of all codes that are unused. That would accomplish the same thing. It's also a visual marker for your staff to know to not use those codes. Codes can also be part of groups. The concept here would be several codes go into a group and you see those indications here. Attended one time is only a part of one group. And that group is everyone in the database except deceased. In the people area, you'll be able to pull up a list that is everyone in the database except deceased. So when that happens, it will go and find anybody with attended one time and put them in that group. If we change and look at regular attender, regular attender is a part of a few different groups. So if you ask the system to show you all attenders, there are reports you can run that would flag all attenders. Well, the, the status regular attender is going to appear in that group and on down. So as you add your own, be mindful of what groups you would like it to be in. A very important one is the group 
include in online directory. Right now, if I went in my church database here and looked at the directory in the portal or in the mobile app, people flagged as regular attender would not show up because they are not part of the group include in online directory. If I look at my member classification, they are in the online directory. In addition to being able to create your own statuses, you can also create your own groupings. If you navigate to Manage Groups, this is a listing of the current groups. If you'd like to create a new one, you can do that by simply clicking in the row indicated to click here to add a new. You can also remove groups. Ultimately, once you've identified your status codes, those will be applied to the people that are in your database and they'll be applied and stay with that person for quite some time. If we see here, this is status history. The top status showing 8-9-2015 is the person's current status. You also see current status listed here. But the progression is never lost. Later, when you're working with lists or creating custom reports, it's useful that you can go back and search someone's status history to see if at some point they were of a certain status. So if I wanted to go back and look at anybody who was a visitor in the year 2015, I could do that if I selected, in my case, all three of these attended level statuses. Those are my indications that somebody was in a visitor status. If you've chosen a much simpler progression with just visitor, that's all you'd have to put. Remember, when you look for that, you're not searching on status, you're searching status history. This is their current status, these are their status history items. A quick review. Again, codes in general make up your drop-down lists. Probably the most important code that you will make a decision about in your implementation of the Alexio database is status. My recommendation is, if you don't have strong feelings about what this should be, Use the basic ones that are provided by Alexio. That would be attended one time, two times, three times, and then regular attender. Then, progressing through the membership levels. But, if you choose to use your own, just make sure to document what that is and do something with the sort mechanism so that these that you will not be using will appear at the bottom of the list. Also, you want to make sure to take into consideration you're going to need statuses for people who may not be attending your church in any way at all. We have a predefined status named friend of the church that might be somebody who is a donor only and would never have any type of attendance records with your church. Well, that's it for talking about codes in general and specifically the all-important status code. <music>